Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another captivating episode of Timeless Talks. Who is your Siri? I'm your host, David Lee, who dares to explore the depths of history with the greatest minds of the past. Today, we have a truly remarkable guest joining us, none other than the brilliant philosopher and mathematician, René Deskitz. Mr. Deskitz, your impact on the world of philosophy and mathematics is undeniable. Let's dive right into our personal Who is Who conversation, shall we? Could you please introduce yourself with your own words? And gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that I join you today on this extraordinary episode of Timeless Talks Who is Who Siri. I am Rene Descartes, a philosopher and mathematician who sought to unravel the mysteries of existence and the profound truths that govern our world. Born on March 31, 1596, in La Haye en Turin, France, my journey began in a time of great intellectual ferment. As a young man, I embarked on a quest for knowledge, seeking to understand the complexities of the universe and the nature of human existence. My passion for learning led me to pursue an education in various institutions across Europe, including the Jesuit College of La Flèche, where I honed my intellectual abilities. Throughout my life, I traveled extensively, residing in various cities such as Paris, Holland, and Sweden. These experiences exposed me to different cultures, perspectives, and intellectual currents, shaping the development of my philosophical and scientific ideas. In the realm of philosophy, my groundbreaking work, Meditations on First Philosophy, introduced the world to my method of doubt, aimed at establishing certain knowledge through rigorous skepticism. I sought to strip away all preconceived notions and build a foundation of truths that could withstand any doubt. In the field of mathematics, I made significant contributions, particularly in the realms of algebra and geometry. My invention of the Cartesian coordinate system, which uses algebraic equations to represent geometric shapes, revolutionized the way we understand and analyze mathematical concepts. I firmly believed in the power of clear and distinct reasoning, striving for clarity in my philosophical and scientific writings. My commitment to precision and logical rigor shaped my approach to understanding the world and disseminating knowledge. Mr. Deskitz, throughout your life, you made significant contributions to philosophy and mathematics. Could you enlighten us about your motivation behind delving into these fields, and what drove you to question the very foundations of knowledge? From an early age, I possessed an insatiable curiosity, a burning desire to understand the fundamental truths that governed our existence. I was captivated by the mysteries of the world and sought to unravel its secrets through rigorous inquiry and rational analysis. Motivated by a genuine thirst for knowledge, I embarked on a quest to question the very foundations of knowledge itself. I was dissatisfied with the dogmatic teachings of my time, the unquestioned beliefs that pervaded society. I sought a method, a systematic approach that would enable me to discern truths that were beyond doubt, a solid ground upon which knowledge could be built. In my pursuit of truth, I became acutely aware of the limitations of human perception and the fallibility of our senses. I questioned whether there existed any truths that were beyond the reach of doubt, any axioms upon which all knowledge could rest. This relentless skepticism drove me to develop my method of doubt, to strip away all assumptions and examine the world with fresh eyes. My motivation lay not only in the pursuit of personal understanding, but also in the desire to contribute to the progress of humanity. I believe that by questioning the foundations of knowledge, we could establish a more robust and reliable framework upon which future generations could build their understanding of the world. In the realm of mathematics, my motivation stemmed from a deep appreciation for the elegance and precision of mathematical reasoning. I saw mathematics as a language, a tool for unlocking the mysteries of the universe. I sought to establish a solid mathematical foundation that could serve as a universal language, bridging the gap between abstract concepts and tangible reality. In summary, my motivation was driven by an unwavering commitment to truth, a thirst for knowledge, and a desire to challenge the established beliefs of my time. By questioning the very foundations of knowledge, I aimed to uncover truths that were beyond doubt, and in doing so, contribute to the progress and understanding of humanity as a whole. One of your most famous statements is cogito, ergo sum, or I think, therefore I am. Could you elaborate on the significance and implications of this phrase, and how it revolutionized the philosophical landscape? Mr. Lee, you have touched upon a phrase that has become synonymous with my philosophical inquiries and one that carries profound significance, cogito, ergo sum, or I think, therefore I am. Allow me to delve into the implications and the revolutionary impact of this phrase on the philosophical landscape. At the core of this statement lies the recognition of the undeniable reality of one's own existence. 
in the pursuit of absolute certainty, I embarked on a philosophical journey to establish a foundation of knowledge that could withstand the skepticism and doubts that plagued the realm of human understanding. Through a process of radical doubt, I aimed to strip away all beliefs and assumptions, leaving nothing but the essential truth that could not be denied. It was in the realization that, even in the midst of doubt, I could not doubt my own existence as a thinking being. This act of doubting and questioning itself served as evidence of my existence. This profound insight revolutionized the philosophical landscape by shifting the focus from external authorities and dogmatic beliefs to the primacy of individual subjective experience and rational thought. It provided a solid starting point, a foundation upon which all knowledge and understanding could be built. The significance of cogito, ergo sum lies not only in its affirmation of one's existence, but also in the implications it carries. It establishes the self as the starting point for knowledge, the locus of consciousness and rational thought. From this foundation, I sought to reconstruct a system of knowledge based on clear and distinct ideas, using reason as the guide to uncover the truth about the world and our place within it. This statement challenged the prevailing philosophies of my time, which relied heavily on authority, tradition, and external sources of knowledge. By emphasizing the importance of individual consciousness and rational inquiry, I set the stage for a new era of philosophical thought, one that prioritized the power of human reason and individual autonomy. The impact of cogito, ergo sum, extends far beyond the realm of philosophy. It has influenced disciplines ranging from psychology to neuroscience, shaping our understanding of the self and consciousness. This phrase encapsulates the essence of my philosophical method, highlighting the importance of critical thinking and the inherent dignity of the human intellect. In conclusion, cogito, ergo sum stands as a powerful testament to the significance of self-awareness and rational thought. It has revolutionized the philosophical landscape by placing the individual at the center of knowledge and inquiry, encouraging us to question, reflect, and embark on a journey of intellectual exploration. Its enduring impact continues to resonate and inspire profound philosophical discussions to this day. Deskets, your philosophical works challenge many established beliefs and cause quite a stir during your time. Looking back, what misconceptions or misunderstandings do you believe people had about your ideas? One common misconception that arose was the notion that I sought to deny the existence of the physical world or undermine the importance of empirical knowledge. However, this is far from the truth. In my philosophical inquiries, I aim to establish a firm foundation of knowledge by subjecting all beliefs to rigorous doubt. Through the method of doubt, I sought to uncover truths that were indubitable and beyond skepticism. By challenging inherited beliefs, I intended to pave the way for a more secure and rational understanding of the world, not discard the world altogether. Another misconception that emerged was the idea that my philosophy led to solipsism, the belief that only one's mind or self can be known to exist. While it is true that I emphasized the primacy of the thinking self in establishing knowledge, I did not deny the reality of the external world or the existence of other minds. On the contrary, I acknowledged the interconnectedness of minds and the external world. My philosophy sought to reconcile the subjective experience of the thinking self with the objective reality of the external world, establishing a framework for understanding their relationship. Furthermore, some critics misunderstood my approach to the relationship between the mind and the body. I proposed a dualistic view that distinguished between the immaterial mind and the material body, asserting that they interacted in a way that allowed for the experience of consciousness. However, this was often misinterpreted as a complete separation of mind and body, disregarding their intricate connection. My intention was to explore the nature of this interaction and understand how mental and physical phenomena are intertwined. Lastly, my mathematical and scientific contributions were sometimes overshadowed or overlooked due to the focus on my philosophical works. It is important to note that my studies in mathematics and science greatly influenced my philosophical inquiries. By employing rigorous mathematical reasoning and applying the principles of geometry, I aimed to establish a method of inquiry that encompassed both the physical and metaphysical realms. In reflecting upon these misunderstandings, it becomes evident that they stem from misinterpretations and incomplete understandings of my ideas. It is my hope that by clarifying these misconceptions, we can appreciate the nuanced nature of my philosophical endeavors and engage in thoughtful discussions that further our understanding of the world and ourselves. 
you are famously known for your concept of mind-body dualism. However, this theory has faced criticism over the years. How do you respond to those who argue that mind and body are not separate entities, but rather interconnected aspects of human experience? Firstly, it is essential to acknowledge the validity of the perspective that emphasizes the interconnected nature of mind and body. The argument that mind and body are inseparable and intertwined aspects of human experience carries weight as we undoubtedly observe their interplay in our daily lives. The experiences of pleasure, pain, and sensory perceptions seem to arise from the interaction between our minds and our bodies. Furthermore, advances in neuroscience and the understanding of brain functions have shed light on the intricate relationship between mental processes and physical processes within the brain. However, I would contend that the mere observation of the correlation between mental and physical phenomena does not necessarily negate the existence of a fundamental distinction between mind and body. The concept of mind-body dualism, as I presented it, sought to address the nature of consciousness and the fundamental question of how mental experiences arise from physical matter. By positing the separation of mind and body, I aim to explore the unique qualities of the thinking self and its distinct existence beyond the physical realm. Critics often argue that mind-body interaction poses a challenge for the concept of dualism. They question how an immaterial mind can causally interact with a material body. To address this challenge, I propose the notion of pineal gland as the interface where the mind and body interacted. While this explanation may appear unsatisfactory in light of modern scientific understanding, it was an attempt to reconcile the interaction between mind and body within the framework of my time. Furthermore, my concept of mind-body dualism stemmed from a deeper philosophical exploration, seeking to establish a secure foundation of knowledge through methodical doubt. By separating the mind from the body, I aim to arrive at a point of indubitable certainty in the existence of the thinking self. In response to the critics, I invite them to engage in a deeper reflection on the nature of consciousness and the intricacies of subjective experience. While the concept of mind-body dualism may face challenges, it continues to stimulate philosophical inquiry and reflection, encouraging us to explore the profound mysteries of human existence. Your book Meditations on First Philosophy introduced a method of systematic doubt as a means to establish certain knowledge. Looking back, do you believe there were any flaws or limitations in your approach to skepticism and the pursuit of truth? In my work, Meditations on First Philosophy, I embarked on a path of systematic doubt, aiming to strip away all beliefs that could be subject to uncertainty and establish a foundation of certain knowledge. I subjected everything I had previously accepted as true to rigorous skepticism, questioning the reliability of sensory perceptions and the possibility of deception by an evil demon. Through this doubt, I sought to find indubitable truths upon which I could build a secure edifice of knowledge. Upon reflection, I recognized that my methodology may have carried certain limitations and implications that are worth considering. One notable limitation lies in the reliance on the thinking self, the I that doubts and thinks, as the starting point for knowledge. By grounding knowledge in the existence of the thinking self, I made an assumption that could potentially be challenged. Critics argue that this assumption is circular, as it presupposes the existence of a thinking self to establish the existence of a thinking self. Furthermore, my emphasis on the importance of clear and distinct ideas as criteria for truth may have been prone to subjective biases. While I intended to rely on reason as a reliable guide, the determination of what constitutes a clear and distinct idea may vary from individual to individual. This subjectivity raises the question of whether my approach truly leads to objective and universal truths. Additionally, my skepticism may have been seen by some as overly radical or extreme, potentially disregarding valuable knowledge gained through experience and empirical investigation. The role of the senses and empirical observation in acquiring knowledge is an area that my methodology, focused on the certainty of the thinking self, may have overlooked to some extent. Despite these potential limitations, it is important to recognize the significance of my endeavor. Through my skeptical inquiries, I aim to establish a methodological framework for philosophical inquiry, emphasizing the use of reason, doubt, and clarity of thought. While there may have been flaws or limitations in my approach, the legacy of my work lies in stimulating critical thinking and philosophical discourse, inviting others to question and examine their own beliefs and assumptions. By acknowledging these aspects, we continue the tradition of intellectual inquiry and self-reflection, paving the way for further exploration and refinement of philosophical thought.
You've made several groundbreaking discoveries in mathematics as well. Could you share with us one particular mathematical insight that you find most fascinating or personally rewarding? While I have made various mathematical contributions, one insight stands out as particularly captivating and personally rewarding, the development of Cartesian geometry, often referred to as analytic geometry. In this branch of mathematics, I established a profound connection between algebraic equations and geometric shapes, laying the foundation for a powerful and unifying approach to understanding the physical world. By introducing a coordinate system where points on a plane are represented by ordered pairs of numbers, I transformed geometry into a mathematical language that could be manipulated with algebraic techniques. This blending of algebra and geometry allowed for a systematic and precise study of shapes, lines, curves, and their relationships, opening new avenues for exploration and discovery. The significance of this insight cannot be understated. It provided a revolutionary tool for solving geometric problems with algebraic methods, enabling mathematicians and scientists to tackle complex mathematical and physical inquiries more effectively. Through the use of equations and graphs, I offered a means to represent geometric entities and equations visually, facilitating a deeper understanding of their properties and interconnections. Personally, this achievement brought me immense satisfaction and intellectual fulfillment. The marriage of mathematics and philosophy in the development of analytic geometry showcased the power of rigorous reasoning, logical deduction, and systematic thinking. It allowed me to perceive the world with a fresh perspective, demonstrating the inherent unity between the abstract realm of numbers and the tangible realm of shapes and forms. Moreover, this insight laid the groundwork for subsequent advancements in mathematics, serving as a cornerstone for calculus, the branch of mathematics that would emerge in the following decades. The impact of analytic geometry reverberates to this day, permeating numerous scientific and technological disciplines and underpinning the foundations of modern mathematics. In reflecting upon this particular mathematical insight, I am reminded of the interconnectedness of knowledge and the beauty of intellectual pursuits. The fusion of philosophy and mathematics has been a source of endless wonder and personal fulfillment, and I am grateful to have contributed to the ongoing tapestry of human understanding. Deskets, as a revered figure in history, your ideas have left a lasting impact. Looking at the present world, how do you believe your philosophies can guide us in navigating the complexities of the modern age? While the complexities of the present world may differ from those of my time, I believe that the core tenets of my philosophies can still serve as guiding principles for navigating these intricate paths first and foremost. The value I placed on critical thinking and the pursuit of truth remains as pertinent today as it was during my own philosophical inquiries. In an era filled with an abundance of information and diverse perspectives, the ability to think deeply, question assumptions, and discern reliable knowledge is of utmost importance. By engaging in rigorous self-reflection and intellectual scrutiny, we can cultivate a discerning mind that enables us to navigate the complexities of the modern age with clarity and reason. Furthermore, my emphasis on the importance of clear and logical reasoning resonates strongly in the face of contemporary challenges. In a world marked by rapid technological advancements, social complexities, and ethical dilemmas, the ability to approach problems with logical rigor and analytical precision can help unravel convoluted issues and lead to more informed and well-founded decisions. By upholding the ideals of clarity and reason, we can strive for coherent and comprehensive understandings of the complexities we encounter. Additionally, my recognition of the fundamental role of the individual and the power of introspection can provide valuable insights in navigating the modern age. Amidst the fast-paced nature of today's society, it is crucial to take moments of reflection and introspection to delve into the depths of our own thoughts and examine our values, beliefs, and actions. By cultivating self-awareness and a deep understanding of our own existence, we can better navigate the challenges of the world and make choices that align with our authentic selves. Lastly, the integration of philosophy with scientific inquiry, as exemplified in my works, can guide us in comprehending and harnessing the advancements of the modern age. As science continues to advance, it is essential to uphold the values of intellectual integrity, the pursuit of knowledge, and the recognition of the intricate relationship between the physical and the abstract. By integrating scientific progress with philosophical reflection, we can ensure that our technological advancements are guided by ethical considerations, human well-being, and a holistic understanding of our place in the world. In contemplating the relevance and application of my philosophies in the modern age, I am reminded that the pursuit of truth, the power of reason, and the examination of one's own existence transcend the boundaries of time.
While the complexities of the present era may be unique, the essence of human inquiry and the longing for understanding remain constant. It is my hope that by drawing upon these timeless principles, we can navigate the challenges of the modern age with intellectual clarity, ethical responsibility, and a profound appreciation for the wonders of human existence. To know is nothing at all. To imagine is everything. Thank you all for joining us on this extraordinary journey into the life and mind of Rene Deskitz. Stay tuned for more thought-provoking conversations with the legends of the past as we continue to uncover the timeless wisdom that can shape our future.